candy. May I have my lunch now? Candy. My lunch, please. Yeah, sure. Sure could do with a bite. Offer it to the gentleman, Candy. Then you may help yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Work for the lady, huh? Yeah. Don't touch the chicken, Mike. How about you, mister? going on? Some sort of a robbery. Everybody out! Come on, get out of there! Come on! Leave that here, on the floor. Keep up! Keep up! Go over there! Over there! Keep going! Okay, hurry up! Okay. Come on! You got all day. Keep up! Over there! Get those hands up! It's a lady. There's a bag that's nothing of value. with my money. Andy, stop him. And right where you are. I am. Okay, let's move out. Your behavior. Yeah, sometimes I'm not too thrilled with it myself. When you're in my employ, I expect both courage and loyalty. Um, getting myself killed comes higher than 75 cents a day. Recovering my jewels is going to be no end of trouble, I imagine. Mm hmm. Nevertheless, it must be done. Hey, Paul! Is back. Hey, Scott Wright. I uh, want you to meet Mrs. Wharton. How do you do, Mr. Well, Cartwright? Mrs. Wharton, pleasure. He got robbed on the stagecoach, not 15 miles from here. No, cleaned us out. Well, that's terrible news. I, uh, I had the stage drop us off at the Vernons. Uh, we borrowed a rig. I rented a Joe and Hoss on the way in. I figured uh, you could put Mrs. Wharton up here. Well, of course. Come in. Sit down, Mrs. No, Wharton, please. Very Take kind yourself at home. Mr. Cartwright, but um, Candy practically dragged me here. I must get into Virginia City to notify the authorities. I keep telling you the stage driver will do that. Is there a British consul hereabouts? A British consul? No. 
an army unit. <laughs> really, now, you're much better off here than I. Just make yourself comfortable, and there's nothing you can do until daylight anyway. Joseph, boss wants you to take Mrs. Wharton's bags up to the guest room. Right, This is your home, Candy. Yeah. You led me to believe you were a servant. No, ma'am, it was you that told me I was. Perhaps I did. Do you think I might have a cup of tea? Oh, yes, ma'am, we'll fix it right up. Oh, and do lace it with a pound of rum, won't you? Yes, ma'am. That's, uh, that's quite a lady there. Would you meet her? Uh, that's a long story. Oh? First of all, I finished the job you sent me to do. Mm -hmm. Here's the contract, signed and sealed. Good. Now, about the lady. Hmm? Well, when I finished the job, I decided to take a look around San Francisco. I uh, met her on the Barbary Coast. Did you? Well, I can, uh, I can understand why you might have been there, but uh, what about her? Yeah, well, she was there to find the steamer office. Oh. So I took her over. She called me her good man, said that virtue should not go unrewarded, and offered me a job. Uh, my fare back to Virginia City in six bits a day to fetch and carry. Seemed like a good deal. Yeah, yeah. Where's she going? Around the world. By herself? Believe me, Mr. Cartwright, she doesn't need anybody else. City. No, no, Mrs. Wharton. You paid my way, and uh, I was coming this way anyway. Four days, three dollars. That was our arrangement, although you are largely incompetent. Cows are more my line. I think Sheriff Corby's back now. You want to go check, see if he has any news for you? Oh, excellent. isn't it? Ah. Oh. What is this? Uh, it's a branding iron. Ah, yes. To identify the livestock. Barbarous. Cruel. It's right up the street.
Mrs. Warden. Mrs. Warden. Uh, ladies, don't come in here. Wonder. Quite picturesque. John Gawk. I see your five. Raise your chin. What are they playing? Draw poker. What is the object of the game? Well, they're betting to see who has the highest cards. Knaves, queens, kings? That's right. Well, then why is he continuing to wager? Um, he was what you call uh, bluffing. It's one of the finer points. Could we go outside now? You girl. Come here. That brooch belongs to me. I don't neither. You sure? Perfectly. What is your name? Laura May Mears. Mine's candy. The initials on the back are E-C-H. Elizabeth Catherine Hewlett, my maiden name. You've had it no longer than last night. It was probably given you by a man. I want it back. I don't know nothing about that. Now leave me alone. Miss Mears, I'll call the sheriff. It'll be your word against mine. Which one of you think I believe? I've no doubt you accepted the brooch in good faith. I'll give you ten dollars for it. I, I didn't mean no harm. I mean, I had no way of knowing it. And the name of the man who gave it to you. Well, well. I, I can't say it I know for sure. You got that from a stranger? I don't want no trouble. Just take it, and that's all. There is a penalty in this country for receiving stolen goods. Yep. We won't tell anybody where we heard it. It was last night, over in Milburg. Billy Buckman. Is that where he is now? No. He was talking about going back to Vallejo. All right, thanks. My husband gave me this. Daniel. It's a Sunday afternoon. One of those dismal, dreary, rainy days. He was so anxious to be alone with me, he dragged me out of doors and we ran into the summer house. I was 16. He was 18 and so shy. All he could say was, here, I want you to have this, and he shoved it into my hand. Sure, he had a much more flowery speech all planned. So sweet. He passed away four years ago. I'm sorry. Then they had the locket Daniel gave me for our first anniversary. The ring my children gave me for my birthday. Their pictures. A miniature of little Jonathan. He died at seven. It's all I have of his. 
And there are other things. Each one means something. An occasion. The world's changed, and the Lord knows I have to. But these things haven't. When I see them, each occasion is very close again. You're too young for the past to be important to you. They stole from me. A hundred pounds would buy the lot. That's your sentimental old fool. Well, come along, Gandy. Well, the rail was about uh, half a day's ride from here. Sheriff Coffey said he couldn't go there. That's out of his jurisdiction, then. Right? Well, who has jurisdiction? The United States Marshal, when he's there, which isn't very often, and when he isn't there, that's a wild and woolly place. <laughs> Sounds fascinating. Um, Mr. Carway, hmm? I got an idea. Uh, you and, and, and Joe and Hoss have to be over at the Johnson place for that roundup, but you don't need me there, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't I ride into Vallejo in the morning? Kind of nose around, see what I can find out. I might come up with something. That's a good idea. Miss Warden, I'm terribly sorry we have to be away at this particular time, but it can't be helped. Anyway, it's only two days. Meanwhile, you make yourself comfortable here, and Hop Singh will take good care of you. Very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. And uh, by the time we get back, Candy should be back. We'll figure out what we'll do then. Have a pleasant journey. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Singh told me your bed hadn't been slept in and the buggy was gone. So I figured you were on your way to Vallejo. How perceptive. What are these two for? I met them on the road and engaged them as guides. They couldn't guide a dog across the street. Charlie, Al, get back in your holes. Oh, come on, Candy. You men, stay right where you are. No easy pickings today. Get moving. See here, sir. You heard me. Move. Those men were quite competent and extremely courteous. When along around nightfall, they'd crack you over the head, very courteous, and pick you clean. And you were unmannerly and high-handed. No need to thank me, ma'am. I suppose you want me to turn back. Yeah. Under the circumstances, that's the only sensible thing to do. Fiddlesticks. Mrs. Warden, that town is dangerous, and there's nothing there worth looking at. We'll see. In any case, my mind is quite made up. Mrs. 
Mrs. Wharton. Let me reason with you. You're gonna barge into Vallejo, right? What do you intend to do? Tell him you want your jewelry back and expect him to roll over and play dead? I have a plan. You see, I found myself in a similar situation in Vazirabad about 18 months ago. I gave some backsheesh to a Pathan Mullah. <laughs> it worked wonders. I don't think I got more than about half of that. Vazirabad is a town in Afghanistan. Very wicked, I might add. Wicked? Mrs. Wharton. This town, whatever you call it, they don't hold a candle to Vallejo. Half the men in that town had killed their brothers for 50 cents cash or a dollar credit. We'll see. Backsheesh is a bribe. It works anywhere. Maybe. Chances are your stuff's not even in Vallejo. It's scattered around, most likely. The only way to find out is to go there. I have a good mind to throw a rope around you and get it over with. I might remind you that I'm old enough to be your mother, and as such, I'm entitled to a certain freedom of decision. Huh? I figure I've done just about everything a reasonable man can do. I appreciate that. There's no need for you to involve yourself further. All right, all right, all right. Good day. Good day. <laughs> have it on you? Uh, yes. How much? Slightly in excess of $5,000. You're a bigger fool than I thought. Sir. It's all right. I'm an even bigger one. I'm going with you. Hill. Now, I want you to give me that money. Whatever for? Because I want to hide it under that rock. Unless you have an argument. No. The idea has merit. Turn your back. I don't know what the record is for bamboozling a lady, but you go into Vallejo with that much money, and somebody's going to set a new one. Here. spot in your mind, just in case something happens to me. Another day in the middle of a week. What? Hey, 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 hey. This work. You're gonna stay here. I am not. Mrs. Warden, I'm gonna try to get your jewelry back, but I can't do a thing if you're gonna worry me to death. So, as a favor, let me try by myself first. 
please. Very well. I'll show you the high spots and the points of interest later. Don't go out of this room alone. On any account. Keep the door locked. I'll be back as quick as I can. Billy Buckman. Howdy. Sit down. Where's the girl? What girl? Everywhere I've been, all over town, people have been telling me Candy wants to see me. Real bad. Well, that's me. And that is? You ain't my idea, no Candy. I've seen you before. I bet you have. As a matter of fact, I did leave word here and there around town. I figured you were quite a devil with the ladies. I can't take credit for that. It's kind of a gift. <laughs> I got a proposition for you. A couple of days ago, some jewelry was stolen off the San Francisco stage for Virginia City. Is that a fact? I got a buyer for it. If I can uh, find out where to lay my hands on it. I don't know anything about that, mister. Well, that's too bad. Somebody told me you might be able to help me. I'll pay $2,500. Cash? On delivery. Maybe. Maybe. Do we have a deal? Deal. Let's go. Hey, how long are you going to be in town? I'd uh, like to wrap it up before morning. Where can I find you? The hotel. <laughs> I don't have that money on me. Not that I don't believe you. <laughs> Give me the name of the buyer. That'll do. Blame me for trying, can you? Stick to your gift, boy. You sure ain't a fighter. We still got a deal, don't we? Yeah. But now you've got two hours to scurry yourself around if you still want that money. Two hours. Thank you. 
I, I don't want to drink. You're standing there, ain't you? Well, yeah. Two bits. Uh, has there been an English lady in here? Uh, not middle-aged, kind of highfalutin and bossy? In here? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Supposing I was such a lady. And I kind of had a half-wit notion to bribe somebody. To buy some information on some stolen property. Who would I go see? John Carmody, the druggist. Thanks. Why, yes. I spoke to Miss Warden about an hour ago. Fine, woman. You don't see a uh, strength of character like that much anymore. You go on, Mr. Carmody. Was she uh, one of my assistants in getting back some jewelry? I thought I could put her in contact with the right party, so I asked her to wait in the back room there. I got a hold of Ed Horn. They had a little conversation and uh, went off together a while ago. You sold her to No. No. Well, I uh, did charge Ed a, a trifle for the information, but that's only fair and fitting. Where'd they go? Well, that's uh, hard to say. That's all the easier is going to get. Ed uh, runs with Billy Buckman and that bunch. We're a tolerant community. I saw have noticed. Yeah, but they can get a little rambunctious and noisy for our taste. So they got a cabin out south of town. I don't guarantee it, but they might be there. That's to keep your mouth shut about talking to me. Oh, it's a pleasure to do business with you, sir. I'll throw something else in. Won't cost you a nickel. Don't get caught with them after dark. Thanks. Stick to fighting. You old sneaker at the door. Most of the time I do, I guess I got a lot in my mind. You want to see our place? Go ahead.
crashing around outside. What do you want? Looking for her. Well, you found her. Tie him up. Figured I'd find you here. I believe I owe you an apology. Yes, ma'am, I believe you do. Mr. Hall agreed to return my jewels for $5,000. I could have gotten them for half that. I wanted a thousand in advance. I went to get it, and they followed me. They got the jewels and the money and you. Yes. And me. Just once. Sometime where you do like you're told. I know. I can be willful. Rather difficult. Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, at my age, I'm not at all likely to change. Besides, I'm usually right. Hey, lady. Let's just get back to business. Now, what's in the money belt? It stands to reason you got a lot more summers else. Now, you get my drift. They're holding me for ransom. I concluded that over an hour ago. Well, that's fine. Now I expect you're going to give me some big hoop to do back to your mouth. There'll be no discussion of money until we talk about my jewels. We are going to talk about money. After you return my jewels. You want me to have Billy Boy here uh, carve off one of your ears? If I were younger, the prospect of disfigurement might carry some weight. Well, now, it hurts considerable. A gentleman in the Sudan who had had first-hand experience told me the pain is vastly exaggerated. Go ahead. You consider the possibility of shock? I might not survive, and then you get nothing. Her agent, all she might be right in. This man, he's your chieftain, or leader, whatever you call it. Yeah. He's not overly intelligent, is he? Watch your tongue. You know, we can always toast his feet on the floor. It would have to be for your own enjoyment. He has no money. I'm not about to lose my jewels to save his feet. <laughs> I don't pay too much attention to her. Oh, all right. You can have the stuff back. Thank you. Now. About the money. I want my jewels physically here, in front of me. Sure. Fetch them. Money is in a bank in San Francisco. How can we get it to you? Well, you just send a telegram. Tell them you want that much put in the bank here in Vallejo, and then you just write us a note that says, hand it over. Oh, well, I didn't know you were capable of anything more complicated than waving a gun in somebody's face. Lady, you're beginning to get me mad. Well, you've been around her for a while.
Well, you satisfied now? They're all here. How much is the ransom? Uh, $25,000. Splendid. With that amount at your disposal, you'll probably debauch yourselves into early graves and the world will be rid of you. That's all worry. <laughs> I keep these, and he goes free as well. Oh, sure. I'll also want the freedom of this cabin. Well, anything you want. left in the middle of the night. I've gone looking for her. Now, where'd she go? Now, how do I know? Maybe Virginia City, huh? Well, this was written yesterday morning. They'd be back by now. You know, I'll give you odds. She went to Vallejo. That's where her jewels are. She seems like the kind of woman to go after them. I wouldn't be too surprised. It was yesterday morning. Probably ran into trouble. All right, boys, let's saddle up again. Oh, boy. I plan on spending the day as far away from the saddle as I could today. for telling me. Mr. Cartwright will come looking for us. Don't we don't count on him. Yes, we can. Mm. He's our only chance. No, no. Hey, no talking over there. We'll have to try to escape. Hey, that was my mirror. Oh, I'm very sorry. That's bad luck. I don't like it, no, sir. Oh, it's not bad luck for us. Only for the one that busts the mirror. Are you sure? Yeah, that's the way it works. The breakfast is ready. Now, come on and get it, or I'm going to throw it out. I bet you we'd be better off if you did. Dumb got his whole life story packed on them fingernails. Uh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Untying him so he can eat. I say let him swill it up like a dog. You get no ideas now. With four of you here, I wouldn't think of it. Yeah. 
time for us to go into Vallejo and get our $25,000. You write that note to the bank. Very well. What you gonna say, lady? Pay to the bearer on demand the sum of $25,000. Being placed on deposit at my order by the Golden Gate Bank of San Francisco. Signed, Mrs. Elizabeth H. Horton. read it to you again. I can make it out. Come on, let's go get it.
buggy. Come on. It's not right or stride. I don't care how you ride. Come on. Hold it. Take your guns out with your fingertips and drop them on the ground. on the ground, you ruffian. Just use your fingertips. Now, get into the house. I'm grateful for the thought behind what you did just now. You're welcome. But if I ever said anything good about you, I take it all back. If I was not bathed in luck, you could have shot me just as easy as them. You're a wild, reckless woman. Shoulder shot, leg shot. Luck had nothing to do with it. I am, by common agreement back home, the best wing shot in the county. Oh. They need tending to. After that, we'll get my jewels. Yes, ma'am. There's no thanks due to us. We got here too late to help, unfortunately, but uh, Candy did all the helping. If ever you should come to Hertfordshire, Mr. Cartwright, do come and stay with me. <laughs> well, of course, thank you very much. I shall be home again in about a year. Special thanks to you, Candy. Any time, Mrs. Warden. Well, goodbye, Joseph. I sure wish you'd spend some time with us at the ranch. No, no. I'm going into the Dakotas. The Dakotas? Yes, I've long wanted to see some red Indians in their natural environment. Particularly the Blackfeet or the Sioux. And I've met a gentleman who will guide me there. Well, okay. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, Mrs. Warden. Bye, Mrs. Warden. Hey, Paul. 
Don't you think we ought to try to stop them? There's no use. Them Indians are just gonna have to look out for themselves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>